Hey everyone, Slenny here. So I did my first live stream and, uh, you know, this is why you test things out because things can go wrong. And I thought my live stream was doing great until I started watching it back and realized that about 13 minutes in, the audio just like cut out for a bit. And so I was like, mm, fuck it. I'll just do another one of these. Uh, so... This is just really my immediate thoughts on the WrestleMania 40 kickoff that uh, just happened in Las Vegas at the T-Mobile Arena. Um, yeah, I'm just gonna share my, my real quick thoughts. Um, one, I wanted to wait to do this video. I considered doing a video after Friday, but I did not want to do something where I was feeling my feelings and something else was playing out because, and, and I've mentioned this to friends of mine that are also wrestling fans um, on the wrestling site that I frequent, 411 Mania. Um, I made mention of this. I've watched wrestling for, for as long as I can, can remember. And the one major thing with every 10th WrestleMania is there's always been at least Three people involved. WrestleMania 10, Bret Hart, Yokozuna, Lex Luger. WrestleMania 20, Triple H, Shawn Michaels, Chris Benoit. WrestleMania 30 was four people. Triple H, Daniel Bryan, Randy Orton, Batista. This year, it looks like The Rock, Roman Reigns, and Cody Rhodes. We're going to get to that real quick. But I didn't want to get to my feelings. I wanted to wait. And, you know, they were talking about this press conference. So I didn't even want to wait to do a video. Like, I didn't want to do a video on Monday, even though Monday things even escalated further with the hijacking of the show, um, with, with everything that's been going on, with the stupid death threats, all that shit. I wanted to even wait past that. I wanted to wait until Thursday because I figured... By this time, we'll definitely have some clarity. So, um, real quick, um, quick thoughts that I wanted to share. The kickoff panel between uh, Michael Cole, Pat McAfee, CM Punk, and Biggie was amazing. I really enjoyed the four of them together. They actually had great chemistry, particularly Biggie and CM Punk, which I never knew I wanted that into my veins until I saw the two of them together. But it kind of makes sense because CM Punk is friends with Kofi Kingston. So, of course, you probably will be friends with one of Kofi's New Day brethren. So, but, but yeah, um, that was, it was great seeing Punk. And Punk, you know, just getting into his whole violent mode and being like, just punch people in the face. Just punch people in the face. It was just great. Um, another really interesting thing, Pat McAfee is now considered as undefeated at WrestleMania. Interesting. Um, not, that's all I'm going to say. But yeah, um, so the kickoff, for the most part, was really, was fluff. Uh, Bianca Belair came out. She uh, did a whole spiel about herself. Um, and mentioned, you know, how she's going to be in the Elimination yeah. Chamber um, and how she's not going into WrestleMania as champion. She also mentioned that she's undefeated, which I'm like, hey, w WWE, run with that. Um, and let's see where the... I'm not even saying that she needs to go like 21-0 like The Undertaker. Get her to 5-0? and Let's see where that goes. That might not happen because I can see Bianca Belair and Jay Cargill wrestling in the, in the future and that's probably going to jeopardize... Uh, Bianca's undefeated streak for sure. But we'll see. Um, but that happened. Rhea Ripley came out. The fans loved her. As expected, I consider her a tweener. I don't see her as a full-blown heel. But she's not a baby face either. But but she's skirting that, that nice, nice line that Steve Austin was in 1997 where he was doing completely heelish things, but the fans loved him anyways. Um, so um, Rhea Ripley's right there. Uh, Becky Lynch came out. They had a face to face. That's kind of. It seems like they're um, really telegraphing. That's probably going to be uh, the, one of the big women's matches at, at WrestleMania. Becky and, and Rhea Ripley facing off. Obviously, Bailey and um, Io Sky uh, will be fighting for the other title on SmackDown. Um, but that happened. A um, couple really good lines. Uh, Becky 
uh, saying that uh, she's going to make make sure that Rhea's the bottom. Um, and that's how you're going to know Becky Lynch is the man. Good, good job. Um, but, but yeah, so that happened. Then we got to uh, the, the main meat and potatoes of, of why we were all here. Seth came out, Seth Rollins came out, uh, World Heavyweight Champion, and didn't want to waste any time. He wanted to hear from Cody Rhodes, who won the 2023 Royal Rumble, he wanted to hear his thoughts, and wanted to know if Cody Rhodes had indeed made a choice uh, for who he is going to face at WrestleMania 40. Roman Reigns came out, though. Um, and, and man, as, as JR would say, business picked up. So Roman Reigns came out. Las Vegas, acknowledge me. One's up in the air. Um, <laughs> Seth was like, hey, look, Roman actually showed up for work for once. And Roman was like, hey, Seth's wearing his wife's shoes. These guys, their digs at each other are phenomenal. Um, but uh, Roman straight up was like, Cody Rhodes had his chance. He didn't. He hesitated. He, uh, or he hesitated. Uh, so now I, as the Tribal Chief, get to pick who I want to face at WrestleMania. And he chose The Rock. Booze! Um, and this brought The Rock out. Um, it, was, it was a mix of cheers and booze. Uh, but when The Rock started getting into the whole bloodline spiel um, and the um, you know, the real royal family of WWE, um, and, you know, getting into the, um, the Cody crybabies, we were seeing the turn, the Cody chance, when The Rock was talking about, um, Rock and Roman Reigns being the biggest main event of WrestleMania history, and the booze, and you could see The Rock's face change in an instant, it was like, you know, when, when Bart's, you know, Bart um, is uh, Bart Simpson's doing the whole uh, I choo choo choose you. And you can see the precise moment where Ralph Wiggum's heart was ripped in half. You can see the precise moment where The Rock was like, fuck all of you people. Um, but, but yeah, it just escalated. And um, The Rock was like, The Rock and Roman Reigns is going to be the biggest WrestleMania main event in history. You Cody crybabies, you know, you guys think it's out, you know, you guys think whatever, but it does not matter what you think. That was, it was a great little line. But uh, Rock and Roman did a, I guess, a tribal handshake. Um, and, and that's when we heard bullshit. No, uh, you know, music. Cody just came out from the back. Cheers. Um, and, and, you know, he was... From, from my vantage point, how I saw it was yeah. on SmackDown, The Rock convinced Cody Rhodes or tr tried to convince Cody Rhodes that stepping aside would be best for business um, because he was going after Roman Reigns. But after seeing how things turned out here, it really seemed like this was more not about The Rock going after Roman Reigns as it is about two part-timers in the NY family basically hijacking the main event of WrestleMania. So Cody came out and was like, yeah, I see what you guys are doing. Fuck both of you. Roman, I'm choosing you as my main event of WrestleMania and I'm coming after the title and I'm finishing my story. Big cheers. And you know, this was the way that WWE needed to go. They had to go this way. The story was, this is a two-year story with Cody Rhodes. So if he was not going to finish his story or go after Roman Reigns, um, why did he win the Rumble? Why are we doing this? So whether or not WWE made a pivot or this was their plan all along, kudos. Um, because you pulled, it, you pulled one over on all of us, me included. I'm even including myself in that. Um, but what was great in this whole final exchange here, um, The Rock smacks Cody after 
uh, Cody gets into a whole thing saying, you know, if the High Chief Peter Maya via you guys' grandfather saw what you guys were pulling, he would be ashamed. But that just pissed The Rock off and The Rock slapped the taste out of Cody's mouth. Basically, do I go, oh, Will Smith, keep my family's name out your fucking mouth. Um, but yeah, shoves everywhere. Seth's pushing people. Cody's pushing people. The Rock's pushing people. Roman's pushing people. Triple H is out. Nick Aldis is out. Security is out. What's going on? It's this is pandemonium, as Gorilla Monsoon would say. Um, but yeah, F-bombs being dropped. Don't pull this shit. I'm on the board. I can do whatever the fuck I want. No, you can't. This is bullshit. And it, it's just crazy. And, and this is how you build a main event for WrestleMania. This is how you do it. So, man, I am really excited. Um... As a Cody Rhodes fan, I'm excited. But just as a wrestling fan and how they have done this, um, this this particular angle, I am over the moon. I had a feeling this is the direction that they may go. We still, I mean, it's still not 100% clarified right now. I think they're pulling it as Cody and Roman is going to face off probably in night two of um, WrestleMania. I don't know if The Rock's going to just be like, I'm on the board, I'm just going to add myself, and it's a triple threat. Or if he's going to, we're going to do a night one, night two thing. We, we don't, I, that's still not clarified. What is clear, though, is Cody Rhodes has made his choice. He is going after Roman Reigns for the WWE Universal uh, Heavyweight title. And um, he's going to finish the story. So that's where we're headed. We are officially on the road to WrestleMania. I am excited. Let's do this. Let's do this. Let's fucking go. But yeah, those are uh, my thoughts on the WrestleMania 40 kickoff. Man, I am excited. But what did you guys think of the kickoff? Share your thoughts. Leave your comments. Like the video. Subscribe to the channel. And don't forget to hit that bell icon so you can get notifications as well. Thanks a lot, everyone. Take care.